What's up YouTube, it's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I wanna start this video by thanking each of you for joining me today. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you'd consider doing so. Remember, subscribing is completely free. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you wanna know when the latest content is available, don't forget to click on the notification icon. Today, we are back with the Bose 700. I wanna make something very clear. I have already reviewed this product in quite detail with both sets of rear speakers, one being the virtually invisible speakers, the other being the new Bose 700 speakers, as well as all of its counterparts. Today, it's all about answering questions. And really those questions come from problems that I have helped my viewers over the last year. We have gotten through them. So I'm in hopes that this video will help you out with things like remote control problems, HDMI arc problems, and some other problems that we came across along the way. I'm so happy you're here today. Let's get started. All right, so the first problem that I find comes across my messages the most is HDMI arc problems. I went ahead and I pulled out this box here. This is from one of my Samsung QLED TVs. A couple things you gotta take note. Most TVs that are upper tier or you know within the last two years now have HDMI arc support. Some have eARC support, some just have arc. Enhanced is the E and then basic is just regular arc support. On this one, we have four HDMIs. Remember, only one of them is the ARC support slot. So, in this case, number four is the HDMI ARC. You could use that as just an HDMI input for a Blu-ray player, but if you plug in your Bose 700 to the ARC support, you now will have audio. Now, the audio that's coming out of your TV once this is complete, meaning anything that you play through your TV, your Xbox, your Blu-ray player, your cable, doesn't matter. You should be getting sound now through all ports of your TV through your Bose 700. Now, for whatever reason, a lot of people, it wasn't working. They tried everything and it just wasn't working. Pretty much, let's just say 10 people asked me that question. 10 of them replaced the HDMI cable and out of those 10, nine of them, it immediately started working. That leads me to believe that some of the HDMI cables that went out with the 7 and actually the SoundTouch 300, for whatever reason, just were not working. Don't forget, if you do not have HDMI arc on your TV, optical is still a solution that you can use. It still sounds great. Um, really, of course, HDMI will always be better. And if they ever have an update to Dolby Atmos, you will absolutely need an HDMI for that to work. So what are some steps you can do if the HDMI port is not working for you? Now, as you can see on my Samsung TV, the sound says receiver HD. And then when I click up receiver HDMI, so we know it's working in this case, but you plug it in, it does nothing. What you need to do is with your TV powered on, your sound and everything going, right? Your Bose 700 is on, you have your sub turned on, everything's powered on and going. You are going to actually disconnect the HDMI arc cable out of the back, wait 60 seconds and plug it back in. When you do this, this is going to force the TV to search for the HDMI and usually fixes the problem. The next reason why it might not work is if the software update is not completed. A lot of people are having a hard time with this because depending on your connection speed, that software update can take quite a while. I've seen it take up to an hour. Meanwhile, you are unable to do anything with your system, causing a lot of people to think it's broke and then unplugging their system during the software update, which is the worst thing that you can do. If that happens, you're going to have to reset your system and start the setup process over again. I do want to make note again that I did do the full set of video that you can check out if you need help setting it up. The Adapt IQ process. Couple things that are happening. First off, you need to make sure that your system is done software updates and it's ready to go. 
Next, when you plug this cable in, you need to push it in really hard. That sounds odd, I know we think that we push everything in, but there's been a lot of people that have contacted me that the Adapt IQ process is not working, and that was one of the reasons. The next thing that you need to keep in mind is the environment actually has to be silent. You need to shut your air conditioner off, your heater off, fans. You don't want anything to interfere with this process. Once your products are placed, meaning your rear speakers, your sub, and your bar, you are going to place this on your head. It needs to be placed directly on top of your head. The microphone on top needs to be facing up and then you run your ADAPT IQ process. If you continue to try to do that and it's not working, you can always try to reset your bar and start again, but there might be an issue with this. This is not something that, you know, probably gonna hold up forever, so store it in a good, you know, place where it's not jammed in the drawer, where the cable doesn't get cut and the microphones don't get broken in any way. Otherwise, it should work very easy and in my opinion is a must to getting your system to sound good. One of the biggest problems people are having with the 700 is believe it or not, the remote. Now, there's several things that are happening. First and foremost, again, the software update needs to be completed on your system, everything needs to be set up properly, and you need to set it up through the app. Well, you get to the app, you try to set it up and it won't work. It flat out just won't connect to your device. Well, a lot of people don't know that this is actually an IR remote only. So if you have RF products, which I will put the definitions of both up here for you on the screen, this remote will not work. Well, what's the difference? Well, IR, you need to actually direct the remote to the IR sensor for it to work. RF, you can be in another room. You can, you know, basically the easiest way to tell is take the original remote to your TV. In this case, I have the one remote, the Samsung one remote, and make sure this works. If this works with your TV, now you need to start troubleshooting your Bose remote. Now, to find out if it's RF, like I said before, you're going to put your hand over the sensor and try to use it. If it works, it's RF. If it doesn't work, then it's IR. Now, again, check your device. A lot of devices have the ability to turn on the IR. You would just go into the settings of the specific device, let's just say it's your cable box, and turn on the ability to accept IR. Now, every TV that uses infrared or IR, right, has a little sensor. We often put our Bose bar right below the TV. This often blocks the sensor on your TV. Now the bar itself actually has an external, not an external that you can see, but it actually puts out its own RF signal. But regardless, if it can't get to the TV, which again, is kind of got to be a direct shot, sometimes it's very finicky, it won't work. So again, no matter what you do, you can't make it work. But let's just say it's not working and you do have the ability to use IR. Well, a few things. First thing is the batteries need to be, you know, like an energizer battery because this is a, you know, a remote that lights up when you pick it up, it can go through batteries fast. This video is to help people. I'm not gonna assume anyone knows how to do anything. So I just wanted to look at this very quickly. Battery placement, make sure that your batteries are in correctly, plus minus, plus minus. Next, when you flip this over, these icons up here, if you press, let's just say volume up, and all of these start to blink, you know that you have an issue and they're not connected. If you wanna use your TV, you would then press this TV. See how it highlights blue? Notice that everything lit up and on my app at the same time, it switched to playing from TV. Another thing to keep in mind, the remote can only operate from a maximum distance of 20 feet or six meters. A lot of people wanna know how do they unpair their remote and start fresh? So basically on the remote control, you're going to press and hold down the volume down 
and the left navigation button. You're going to hold it for five seconds and this is going to clear it from the pairing list. You're going to press the center navigation button once to put the remote back into pairing mode. Once that's done, now we can try to repair it if it wasn't working. Over on the app, you're going to go ahead and press your sound bar and then you're going to go to settings. And in the settings, you are going to see universal remote, okay? Now, I'm not gonna undo mine, but what would happen here, if it doesn't say television, which at this point it shouldn't, um, but if it does and you wanna start over, also remove it from there. Now, once you do this, it's going to put it back into pairing mode, like I said before, and if you cannot get it to pair automatically, it will now automatically prompt you to put in your code, as I said before. I also wanted to show you where the HDMI CEC on is here. And then of course you have your optical auto wake up and your power sync. Power sync is a big, big one if you want the bar to turn on and off with your TV, okay? So this again will help people that way they're not messing with the bar after their TV's turned on. Everything will be in sync with each other. Next. Another thing you need to make sure to check when your sub or your rear speakers are not working is under the audio menu. And as you can see, we have this switch. If that switch is shut off, right, the base module will not pair no matter what you do. So it's very important that it's turned on. And then again, down here, the audio delay, make sure that's on zero. Another issue, all of a sudden, you don't have enough bass. The software updates are done. You have your bass turned to 100, but you can hardly hear it. Here's something that is often missed. Under settings, you have audio. Now we're in audio. As you can see, right below the adapt IQ is dialog mode. Dialog mode is great for people that want to hear, you know, basically just the voice more than anything. However, when it's turned on, it does severely reduce the bass. A little workaround if you want the best of both worlds, go ahead and shut dialog mode off and actually turn up the center channel to your liking. This will let you keep your bass and in addition to that, hear the voice a little bit better. All right, so the Adapt IQ, remember you can turn that on and off right here. That's gonna make a big difference in the sound and anytime you move your speakers, run it again and again that will clear out the old one and let you start fresh all right so we make sure that hdmi cec is turned on in the bose app as well as in your tv in the samsung tv external device manager and as you can see the hdmi cec is activated this is a must make sure that you do it this will help communicate with each other at this point if your remote still does not work, I would contact the manufacturer. You know, if you know that you have an IR and you know it's turned on and it's still not working, you've watched for obstacles, you, it has a direct um, sight to the device, go ahead and call Bose so that they can help you fix that or maybe send you a replacement. All right, so just some other things that have come across. First thing I wanna talk about now is the app. Now, Bose has a lot of different products and there's a lot of different apps. So if you do not use the Bose Music app, it will not work. That's the only app that works with the 700 and then you have, you know, the SoundTouch 300 has their own app. Having said that, in this case, with the Bose 700, the SoundTouch 300, or even the Bose 500, the rear speakers, whether you pick the virtually invisible speakers or you pick the new 700 speakers, which I absolutely recommend you do, or if you have the Acoustamass module or you have the Bass 700 module, you can actually use any of those products with either the 300, the 500, or the 700. Now, that sounds kind of weird because the SoundTouch products, right, the SoundTouch 300 uses the SoundTouch app, and then the Bose 500 and 700 uses the Bose Music app. So, here's the thing. Let's say you have your sub and your rears connected to your SoundTouch 300, but now you bought the 700 soundbar and it's not working for you. Well, here's why. 
you must first go into the SoundTouch app, delete the sub and the rear speakers, and then now set them up with your Bose 700 bar. It's pretty interesting because even if you connect the SoundTouch 300 um, Acoustamass module, once connected to the Bose 700, it will now say Bass 700 or whatever. So those products can be used with either product, but to do that, if they have already been linked to another system, you must first go back in and delete them. A lot of people are saying, hey, my products aren't showing up. That's usually the reason why. Well, let's say you have something that's brand new. You plug in your base module and it is not connecting. First thing you need to do is unplug the base module for 60 seconds, plug it back in and it should discover it. Also remember the same goes with the rear speakers. Now, I can't even tell you how many people have contacted me and said, hey, my JB Tech Fanatic, my rear speakers are not connecting to my 700 soundbar. Every time the reason has been, remember, you have two speakers. On the box, you have a left and right switch. If those switches are both switched to left or both switched to right, your system will never pick it up and will not connect. Go ahead and switch them to the right and left, unplug, wait 60 seconds, plug them back in, and it will connect with each other. Now, everything in this part of the system, we have a base module, rear speakers, and a sound bar. Another question that comes up all the time is how many subs can I connect to my sound bar? Both the 300 and the 700, you can, in fact, connect two subs. It will work. Trust me, no issues there. You can connect two. As far as rear speaker goes, whether you connect the virtually invisible speakers or the Bose 700 speakers, two is the max. That is all you can connect for your Bose 5.1 system. If you add two subs, it now makes it a 5.2. So now we're gonna talk about additional add-ons. Now, again, I've covered these in, um, I have a video on the SoundTouch series and the um, speaker 300 and the speaker 500. If you wanna check those out, you can. But people wanna add more to the sound system by adding, let's just take, for example, the Bose 500 speaker. Now these are great sounding speakers, they're pretty high dollar, but they sound amazing and you can in fact connect them to your Bose 700. First question all the time I get, can it be used with movies and TV? Yes, absolutely. But here's the thing, everything except for your rear speakers and your sub and sound bar, all the additional speakers you hook to your system works on Wi-Fi direct. If you do not have a very capable router, you will in fact have audio delay. I ha am happy to say, you know, I have several routers I use. My favorite still by far is the Netgear X10. I'll leave a card up here if you wanna check out my video on that, but that is a very capable router. I can honestly tell you that I can have a football game on as an example. I can have my complete system running, my 700 rears, my 700 soundbar, my sub, and four 500 speakers without any audio delay. Now, for those of you that might have that kind of millisecond audio delay, you can't get over it. There is a trick that sometimes works with some of the routers that might not be as capable, and that is to simply hit pause, wait about 30 seconds, and then hit play. That kind of lets everything sync up together and then play it all at once, and you should be good to go. But those speakers do not continue to make your system, you know, into the seven category. Your system will max out at 5.2 Dolby surround sound. All the additional speakers are just basic stereo. However, they do add a lot of volume. They add multi-room if you'd like, and they definitely make for a very pleasant whole, you know, like entire home audio when you're listening to music or maybe you're having a sports party. But truly, it is amazing. All right, so next one is kind of a touchy subject. And really, I'm just gonna be honest with you. 
As a YouTube channel and as a person, I want a positive environment. I am not the kind of channel that likes to go and attack other products or talk badly about products. I also am not sponsored by any company. Bose doesn't pay me, Samsung doesn't pay me. The reason why I'm telling you this is, is there is a very big element to Bose that you might or probably have dealt with. Me talking about Bose on YouTube has brought or really opened my eyes to a whole different scene. And that is what they call themselves, I think, audiophiles. And you know, they're audio fanatics. There's nothing wrong with that, but they will attack you for liking Bose. They will tell you that Bose sounds terrible. They will tell you Bose isn't true surround sound. Now, I know that there's better systems out there. And like anything in this world, Bose is a massive brand. They have amazing brand recognition. So of course, there's gonna be knockoffs that give you some of the features. And of course, there's going to be, you know, full surround systems that are $10,000 and up, or maybe 5,000 or whatever, that can sound better. But take me as an example, take this the way you want, but I own many different surround systems. I own many different sound bars. And to be honest with you, if I wanna buy a sound system, I'll go buy it, okay? And I choose almost always to go with Bose. Why? Well, a lot of these people would tell you they're tricking us the way they sound and uh, you're not getting true surround sound. They're just making you think you are. And my thought process to that is, even if it's right, even if they're correct, how can you trick what I hear? If I'm happy with it and you're happy with it, that's all that matters. It's, it's our hard earned money that we went and bought a product, we brought it to our house, we listened to it and it makes us happy. It sounds amazing to us, it sounds amazing to our friends and we are happy. So I never like when someone attacks someone that purchase something that they like. Who are they to tell us or you what you like? Oh, well, it should sound like this. Well, that is just a matter of opinion. Even if there's statistical facts of different frequencies and what the ear can hear and all of this stuff, really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it doesn't sound different to you, the consumer. That's all that matters. And in this case, I want to say, listen, if someone can tell you that a full out 700 system with the sub and the 700 rear sounds bad or it's garbage, listen, that's an outright lie. There's no way someone can look me in the eye and tell me that that sounds bad. The next thing is, is that you'll hear that they use the sub for voice. Well, here's the thing. There's a difference between owning just the 700 soundbar just the 700 soundbar and just the sub and owning the 700 soundbar, the sub and the rear 700 speakers. Again, now making it 5.1 surround sound and now you're getting a real surround sound experience. In addition to this, I have to point this out. In the old days and not even that long ago, you would go to the store, you would buy yourself a sound system and that was the system you got. You might be able to buy a speaker to plug into it, but that was it. Now we are in the digital age that everything's connected, software updates can come out at any time. So therefore, we continue to get an enhanced experience when in the old days, what you bought is what you got, right? But the great thing about it is, the 700 soundbar allows you to build as you can afford. So if you can only afford a sound bar, but in three months now you can afford the sub and then you can afford the rears. In the old days, you had to buy the whole kit at once, couple thousand dollars, you either had it or you didn't. In addition to that, the next thing is, is JB Tech Fanatic, why do you choose Bose? They only have Dolby Digital. Well, here's the thing. All of the Dolby Digital Plus, Dolby Atmos is all about rights, money, you know, paying them to put that tag on there. But at the end of the day, at any time with the software update and maybe a new speaker set that we can purchase, 
Dolby Atmos could be added to the system at any time. And regardless out of any system, Dolby Atmos to me is really only true Dolby Atmos at the movie theater. You know, you can get a $10,000 home system and yeah, it'll sound amazing and probably pretty close, but honestly, most people aren't willing to spend that much money. Therefore, if you get a $150 sound bar with Dolby Atmos, it's like saying my Samsung phone really has true Dolby Atmos, right? It's a phone. So that's my thought on that and I hope it helps you. So you know that when you go out and you buy a Bose, you bought a very popular brand. It's something that is beautiful. It has come a long ways over the years and it does truly sound amazing. You shouldn't be ashamed of it and you shouldn't be afraid to talk about it. I joked the other day, you know, a common business practice is you don't talk um, politics or religion. Sometimes I think maybe um, technology can be added in that category. Last thing I'm gonna talk about I have so many people ask me, should I get the Bose 700 or should I get the Bose 650? This is such a hard question to answer because there is quite a bit of a price difference. The 650 is Bose top of the line surround sound system. It definitely gives you true sound separation and the base module is going to have more frequency levels to it. However, for me, when it comes to movies, I pick the 650 slightly over the 700 of course, but for music, I actually enjoy the 700 a little bit more for music. Now, having said that, dollar for dollar, the Bose 700 is right on track. With the new Omni Jewel 700 speakers, this is something that didn't launch with it. It definitely kind of edges back towards that 650 and so does the price. So, at the end of the day, both systems are amazing. The 650, of course, is the better system. However, the 700 is amazing. I recommend it to people every day. I use it myself every day, as well as the SoundTouch 300, still an amazing system. Now, as always, I wanna thank each of you for taking this time. I do this for you. If I missed anything, don't forget to reach me in the comments section. I answer everyone that has a legitimate question and needs my help. I do YouTube for you and you only. And as always, I want to take a moment to remind you, life is so short. Don't forget to love your family. Help your neighbors. Love each other. Go out today and do an act of kindness. You know, the world is a sick and twisted place and the only people that can change it is you and I. I want to say thank you. I am so honored that you're here. Invite you to subscribe one last time. If you need me, I'm here. Reach me in the comments section. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at JB Tech Fanatic. I can't wait to talk to you in the comments and see you in the next video. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.